Hi, everybody. This is Grandma Jan coming to you from the Christian Reformed Church. We're getting ready to have one of our uh, virtual Life Plus sessions. Miss Angie started some last spring. We quit them for the summer, and we've decided that we're going to start up again. Uh, the way we've kind of decided to do this, for those of you who weren't here last Wednesday night, is for the first week of the month, we will meet here at the church. The little children will stay upstairs in the fellowship hall, and the older kids will go downstairs and work on their projects. We will find time to have lessons and a little bit of singing and that kind of thing, and, and little um, crafts to do for the little people, like we've always done. The lesson tonight is called God Never Changes. That's something that I want you to know first off, God never changes. We'll repeat that at the end of our lesson tonight. But there are a lot of things that God has put in our lives when he created the world. He made seasons. And I found a little book that I have read with my kids at home many times. It's a very short little thing. And it will tell you how many seasons we have. I'm sure many of you out there would be able to tell me what kind of seasons we have, but I'm just going to go through it for some of the little ones to make it a little bit easier for them to understand. This book is called Seasons. The first one that they talk about is spring. In spring, I play in the rain. The next one is summer. In summer, I play in in the sun. The next season, which the season we are in right now, is fall. In the fall, I play in the leaves. The last season is winter. In winter, I play in the snow. And the last page says, I love all for seasons. If I had to ask you, if I had to ask you how many of you listen to the weatherman so you know what to wear to school tomorrow, do you ask your mom maybe, um, mom, can I wear shorts tomorrow? Is it going to be warm enough for me to wear shorts or do I have to put warm pants on? Maybe it's time to put on the sweatshirts because it's getting a little cold outside. Just to say that each season, we have to wear certain outfits, don't we? In the summertime, we don't wanna wear much clothes. It's just warm. We can get by with shorts and a little tank top and we're happy with that. In the spring, we wear less of the winter clothes, the heavy boots and all that, we can get rid of them. And come fall, we get to wear the flannel shirts like I have on now. It's time for flannel shirts. I hope you all have one and can wear one to school. Sometimes the weatherman will say, well, it's going to be 65 degrees tomorrow. It's going to be partly cloudy, or maybe he'll say partly sunny. And then he's going to say, there might be a little bit of breeze, maybe at 10 miles an hour. Weather conditions like that, we know exactly, when we hear exactly what the weatherman says, we have an idea of what we're supposed to wear. And it also gives us an idea of the many things we can do outside. In the season of spring, what happens then? We can watch the trees blossom. <clears throat> we can see the gardens start to uh, get planted, the fields out in the uh, out in the field, you can see the farmers out there planting their grain, the corn and the beans. Uh, in the summertime, we can watch those things grow. God made it so that each season has its reason for being on, in our lives. Number one, God made it so, so that we can see how things progress. 
from the spring to the summer, and then we come to the fall and we have harvest time where everything is picked and put in, in uh, granaries so that the people can get fed all over the world. That's how God planned it. The next thing that comes is winter when we have to wear the earmuffs and we have to wear the gloves and the big heavy boots. Winter comes because that's the time God wants everything to rest. And he supplies the ground, especially in Iowa, in our area, with more moisture when that snow melts so that, yep, back in spring, we're ready to go plant and do those kind of things. If I could ask you, what is your favorite season of the year and ask you why? I bet I could get a lot of reasons why summer is the best one. Everybody likes to be out on the beach or everybody loves the swimming pool, right? Maybe a lot of you like to play sports in the summertime. Some of you play little league. Uh, that's a good thing. Some of you, I think there's even spring soccer leagues, all that kind of thing. So you're out doing good physical exercise. Maybe some of you like winter better. Maybe some of you like to go out in the snow and make snow angels. Do you like to do that? Maybe some of you like to have snowball fights. Or some of you maybe like to build a big fort. I wonder if anybody likes to help mom and dad clear off the sidewalk. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe not. If you asked me what my favorite season is, you know, I'm going to say something that might be a little strange, but usually... The season I like the best is the one I'm in, like this fall. Who, when you look outside and see the beautiful colors out there this year, who would you say that doesn't like that? We all love to see that, don't we? We love to see how the harvest gets done, those big machineries out there uh, combining, and there's... Then the next guy comes by with his big tractor and machine and ba makes these great big bales that we're getting ready to feed the animals with during the winter. The other thing about the seasons, everyone seems to have its own kind of thing to eat, like for the fall. How about eating pumpkins and apples? And that's a lot of times when... Um, the people who have the trees where walnuts grow on, this is the season that a lot of those kind of nuts are picked and harvested. Sometimes cranberries, because we're getting ready for, for pumpkin time and ha at Halloween and also at Thanksgiving. Those are good things to have around. Sometimes God's, well, I should go back and say, God said that he created every season with a purpose. And we just went through some of those. There are um, seasons that have their purposes, but there are some times when the seasons don't seem to be very good for us. Like right now, we are going through the season of COVID-19. Think of all the changes that has made for us. God still does not change, and he still loves us, and he is still taking care of us, but it makes us do a lot of different things, doesn't it? Maybe you're in a fun season. Maybe you kind of like being home more than you used to be. Maybe you and your happy family uh, find time to play more, play more indoor games if that's what you like, or outdoor games. Maybe you're learning to eat different things that because you've had the time to bake, like maybe cinnamon rolls, maybe pancakes for breakfast, these kind of things. Sometimes, too, we do have sad seasons. Maybe sometimes you've lost a, a, a neighbor. Maybe you lost a grandpa or a grandma. Maybe sometimes it's a season when you're trying very hard at school, but some things just don't click. Maybe the new math seems hard for you to do. Sometimes even there's trouble in your household, and that makes you sad. And you think that maybe you're going to have to move to a different place. Maybe you have friends that really aren't friends. 
that aren't good for you. Maybe you've had to go to the dentist and get braces on. Maybe you've had to go to the eye doctor and get glasses so you can see better. I want you to know today that seasons will change. Bad times and good times will come and go. You yourself will change. Every one of you is going to grow. By Christmas time, there could be some of you out there who've grown an inch because that's just how God made us. Your family and your friends will make changes too in your home. And for sure, you notice that there's a lot of differences in your school, correct? Everybody has to sort of stay away from each other. You have to wear masks. And you're doing things online that you didn't do before. And maybe you'll even see things that are different in your church. Even how you're going to look. Maybe even your hair will be different. Who knows? That's how God changes. But what you have to know is that God will never change. If you have a relationship with you, he will never leave you. He will always be there to help you through. God says that he has made everything beautiful in its time. Every season has its own beauty. And that means that he can't, he won't take anything away from us in the good seasons. And perhaps he'll add something to make a bad season even more beautiful than we could ever have imagined. God is an incredible God. In the packets that Miss Angie sent home with you, there were several things that um, you could do to help pass some time and help learn some things. One of them was this nice picture that says on the top of it, to everything there is a season. In the Bible, in the book of Ecclesiastes, that's where this sentence comes from, that particular verse, there is a whole lot of things that it says there is times for. You can substitute the word season for, and it will all make sense. I'd like to read that to you if you'll listen, please. There is a time for everything, and everything on earth has its special season. There is a time to be born. There is a time to die. There is a time to plant and a time to pull up the plants. There is a time to kill. There is a time to heal. There is a time to destroy and a time to build. There is a time to cry and there is a time to laugh. There is a time to be sad and there is a time to dance. There is a time to throw away stones and a time to gather them in. There is a time to hug and a time not to hug. There is a time to look for something and there is a time to stop looking for it. There is a time to keep things and there is a time to throw away things. There is a time to tear apart. There is a time to sew together. There is a time to be silent and a time to speak. There is a time to love and there is a time to hate. There is a time for war and there is a time for peace. In that packet, there was a word find in there and that says the same thing again. A time for everything, Ecclesiastes 3. At the bottom of the page, it lists these um, seasons again. There's a time to speak, a time to gather. There's time for peace. There's a time to scatter. There's time for war. There's time for hate. There's time for mourning. There's time for dancing. There's time for love. There's time for laughter. There's time to mend. 
There's time to tear down, time to throw away, time to keep, time to uproot, time to plant, time to die, and time to be born. That's an interesting thing to go through. There's also a nice little booklet in there that takes you quite a while to color it. I did, and it took me a while. Not that I'm the fastest colorer, but that's okay. It shows the seasons and all different kinds of things that pertain to seasons. In this one, you can see the rainbow. It's the spring, and all the flowers are coming up. It's a kitty sitting in the window, and he's in every picture, so you can watch and see what he does. This time, he's on the ground. He's watching them barbecue He's in the summertime. He's watching them around the pool. He's, um, what else was going on there? Oh, there's a table there with an umbrella on it for people to sit outside. What fun. We just passed that season, didn't we? This is the season we're in now, the fall season. There's the pumpkins. The kitty's running around after something. I'm not sure. I bet it's leaves that are falling. There's leaves falling all over there. Pumpkins in there, there's a rake in there, getting ready to rake them all up. And then we come to winter. There's a sled there. That's going to be coming pretty soon, probably sooner than we want. The kitty's back in the window. It's too cold to be outside. There's a snowman out there. The birds are scraping up on the dead grass trying to find some seeds to eat. But it's a fun picture to do. The, uh, probably the most fun thing for me to do was to do the rainbow. It's just a good thing that reminds us that God cares for us all of the time. Along with this story, <clears throat> uh, the changing seasons, Angie found a very nice book that I'm going to read to you. And Clayton, who's mining the techie things of this lesson. We'll be putting the pictures in so that you can see um, the, the beautiful illustrations that a lady by the name of Olya Bedelina colored these pictures, painted them. She likes to do watercolors, and that's exactly what it looks like. And then it's written by a grandma named Jean Matthew Hall, and she did a nice job of making us a book entitled God's Blessings for Fall. On the first page, here we go. Trees stand tall against the whistling wind. Brightly colored leaves rustle and quiver and snap with each chilly gust. They drift down and down and down and nestle on the ground. With a whoosh of wings, Owl lights upon a broken branch. She hurries inside the hollow tree to fluff her nest and hide. Her huge eyes peek out into the light. Blink, blink, too bright. Morning is her night. Piles of leaves, red, gold, and orange, huddle around the roots of the trees, and then they take to the sky. The dusty, rusty smell of musty leaves floats over fences and fields. Achoo! A squirrel steps lightly, slightly, on crisp leaves. Crackle, crunch. He snatches fallen acorns and nuts and stuffs them inside his chubby cheeks. And his little nose twitches and his bushy tail switches. His tiny feet leap and scamper to the top of the tallest tree. Honk, honk. The V of the Canadian geese cuts through the cold, clear sky. They are headed south to the sunshine. Hurry, hurry, they seem to say. Flock, keep flying, that away. Black bear digs for juicy roots and scratches around for crunchy bugs to eat. 
He fills his belly with berries and crab apples too. Even grass and leaves will do. It takes a lot of yummy to fill this hungry bear's tummy. Mother deer nudges her fawns towards the thicket. They munch on leaves. Heads down, the fawns find acorns on the ground. A special fall snack indeed. Mouse scoots around from under the house. She spies a bruised apple on the ground. Squeak, squeak. Mouse pushes and pulls and rocks and rolls that apple all the way home. Raccoon rumbles here and there, rummaging under piles of pine needles. She scratches through the leaves into the heavy soil. Grubs and crickets, watch out. A masked menace is on the prowl. Crow calls. He's such a noisy thing, and he thinks that he can sing. But his caca, caca only brings rows and rows of other crows to gather in the empty apple trees. Baskets sit piled high with apples, ready for baking breads and pies. Yellow apples, green ones with a sour tang, blushed ones with a crunch with every bite. Some are shiny, red, and sweet. All so good to eat. Pumpkins rest at their cozy farm stand, some fat and round and smooth as skin, some bumpy and warty, some tall and thin. Bright colors, orange, red, green, yellow, and white. Spider slings silver threads from one dry corn stalk to another. Then round and round she creeps. She'll weave her web while we sleep. Crickets who fly, climb, or creep, food to gather, warm nest to keep. All are getting ready for a good night's sleep. Fall is full of God's blessings. And that's our story of God's blessing, blessings of fall. Getting back to where we started, there are some things I want you to remember from this lesson. Not very many things, and I think even the littlest of you can remember this. God never changes. He makes a lot of changes around us, but he never changes. He never stops loving us, never, and he will always forgive us. So I want you to know that you know that you know God never changes. God never will quit loving you, ever, and he will always forgive you. Take care. Let's have a little prayer before we close this session, okay? Heavenly Father, bless all those young people out there who are taking the time to watch and learn about the seasons we love it that you have provided us with the summers and the springs and the falls and the winters. We love that there is a changing season all the time. Help us to never forget that you will never change. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Enjoy the falling leaves of our happy fall season. <laughs>